Hello and welcome to this Revision Monkey video on the required practicals that you've been asked to focus on for the 2022 exams for AQA Combined Scientists and that's the trilogy version of Combined Science which means at the end of your course you do six exams all of which are one hour and 15 minutes long and this is for higher tier students and we're looking at the required practicals in Physics Paper 1. So the required practicals that they've asked you to focus on are specific heat capacity and current potential difference graphs, otherwise known as IV graphs. So the rest of this video will focus on the information you need to know for these required practicals. I'll also put a link in the description for the rest of the content you've been asked to focus on for this paper and also look out in the description because I'll hopefully put some questions in there for you to practice as well. In this practical, you'll be calculating the specific heat capacity of a material. And the specific heat capacity is the energy needed to heat one kilogram of a substance by one degree C. Now there is an equation to go with this practical, and this equation you're actually given on your data sheet. The equation is E equals M times C times theta, whereby E is energy measured in joules, M is mass measured in kilograms, C is specific heat capacity measured in joules per kilogram degree C, and theta is temperature change measured in degrees Celsius. So the good news is that you don't have to learn this equation, they will give you this one on the equation sheet. However, for this practical, we are going to be calculating specific heat capacity, which is the C part here. Therefore, we need to somehow work out the energy transferred to our material, the mass of our material, and the temperature change. And I'm going to take you step by step through the practical. If you find this practical particularly challenging, I'm going to take you through a simpler method first of all. And then after this, a more difficult one using several equations. So you may want to skip forward to that one if you prefer, or if you'd like a, a much simpler method, then have a look at this one. So let's say, for example, we have this metal block. That is the material that we want to measure the specific heat capacity of. In the exam, it could be anything like aluminium or copper, or they could talk about a, a random sub substance altogether. So the first thing we do is weigh the metal block using a balance and record the mass. So this will give us this part of our equation, the M, the mass. Then we need to wrap our block in insulation to reduce the energy transfer to the surroundings. So you might have some uh, bubble wrap or something like that that you would wrap your block in. Next, we place a thermometer in the block and we need to measure the temperature of the metal block using the thermometer and record it. So this is our starting temperature. We measure our temperature of the block. We then put an immersion heater, which is this heater here. We call it an immersion heater because you put it inside the substance. You immerse it in the substance. We need to plug that into a joule meter over here and then plug it into a power supply. This will, joule meter here will give us our energy transferred to the block. We place the immersion heater inside the metal block and start a timer. Next we heat it for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes we read the temperature from the thermometer and record it. And we use this then to calculate the temperature increase. Temperature after minus temperature before gives us the temperature increase. So now we have three values which we can use to calculate the specific heat capacity. We've got the energy that we've got from the joule meter, we've got the mass which we've recorded on the balance, and we have our temperature change, which we've recorded using the thermometer. 
So the final thing we need to do is rearrange that equation on our data sheet to make it specific heat capacity equals. And that would equal energy divided by mass times temperature change. So to do that, we read the energy transferred to the block from the joule meter. That will give us the E, like we said. And then we put the numbers into our equation. Specific E plus D equals energy divided by mass times theta. Now I'm going to move on to a more difficult method that doesn't use a joule meter, which uses a couple of equations to work out um, the energy transferred to the block. So if you're comfortable with this method, that's great. You can skip to the next required practical. If not, you might want to listen up to the more difficult method, which is coming up straight after. OK, so we're still on the um, required practical for measuring the specific heat capacity of a material. This method um, doesn't use a joule meter, but many of the steps are the same as the simpler method. Again, we're going to focus on this equation on the data sheet equals mc theta which we can rearrange to calculate specific heat capacity. So we still do the same steps as before. Weigh the metal block using a balance to record the mass. Wrap the block in insulation to prevent heat transfer to the surroundings. Place a thermometer in the block to measure the temperature before. The next step is slightly different, however. This time we're going to plug an immersion heater into a power supply and connect an ammeter here in series to measure the current. We're going to then place an immersion heater inside the metal block and start a timer as we did previously. So rather than a joule meter this time, we've got an ammeter. We're going to heat it for 10 minutes like before and after 10 minutes, read the temperature of the block and calculate the temperature increase. So we've got mass like before, we've got theta, temperature change like before, and what's different is how we're going to calculate energy. So if we've calculated current, you need to use the equation for power. P equals I times V, where I is the current, which is read from the ammeter, and V is the potential difference that you set on your power supply. So using this equation here, we can calculate power by multiplying the reading from the ammeter by the reading that you've set on the power supply for potential difference. Next, we need to use a different equation to calculate energy transferred. That equation is E equals P times T. So P we've calculated from this equation above and time in seconds is the time that the immersion heater was heating the metal block for. And the final step is then to put it back into this equation. Specific heat capacity equals energy that you've calculated from the two equations divided by the mass times by the temperature change. IV graphs required practical. You may well have heard of these called IV graphs or current potential different graphs with the I standing for current and the V for potential difference. So with these graphs, the circuit that we need to build is all the same. And what we'll be changing is this component here. At the moment, we've got a resistor in the circuit and we need to be able to change this for a diode and then a filament lamp. So we set up a basic circuit with either some cells or a battery, an ammeter to measure current, a voltmeter to measure potential difference and this component here is a variable resistor. This allows us to change the resistance of the circuit and therefore the current. So we're going to start off by looking at a circuit to draw an IV graph for a resistor. So our end goal is to be able to draw a graph of current against potential difference and plot all of our results on our graph. To get there, what we need to do is set up the circuit. I've just suggested two cells. You might just put a, a, put a battery in there or just one cell. It doesn't really matter. An ammeter to measure current and a variable resistor. And we're going to start off with a resistor in series. That's just the component that we're looking at. We then connect a voltmeter parallel to the component to measure potential difference. We take the reading for current 
which is going to be our I from the ammeter and take the reading for potential difference which is going to be our V for the voltmeter and plot these on a graph of current against potential difference. You may well say that you're going to put them in a the table first and plot them later, either is fine. We're then going to adjust the variable resistor, which is this component here, and take new readings for current and potential difference. And we're going to repeat this five times. So if we adjust this five times, it will give us five sets of readings for ammeter, which is the current, and five sets of readings from the voltmeter, which is potential difference. If we didn't have that, we just get one reading from each and we would be stuck. So this gives us a wide range of readings. Up to this point, we would have been able to draw this part of the graph, whereby we've taken readings for current and potential difference, and we've plotted them and drawn a line of best fit. However, we also need to get the negative region of the graph, so we do that using the next step, which is to remove these cells and to replace them into the circuit in the opposite direction. And then we repeat steps three and four above. And by doing that, we get negative readings for our, for our voltmeter and ammeter, and we can collect data for this negative region of the graph. So that's our completed graph for a resistor at constant temperature. You can see a directly proportional relationship between current and potential difference. If we wanted to replace this component and investigate something else, that's all we would have to do. We'd leave the rest of the circuit the same and we can replace it with a diode, for example. Now, a diode only lets current flow in one direction. So you'll notice that the graph does not have values in the negative region and it only has values in the positive region. Finally, you might want to draw an IV graph for a filament lamp and this graph has a different shape again because as current increases, the temperature of the filament lamp also increases, so resistance increases. Okay, You can see here the graph tailing off as current gets higher. The trouble is the lamp gets very, very hot, and then the atoms in the wire vibrate more. They are already vibrating because they're a solid, but they vibrate more, making it more difficult for the electrons to flow. So we get this curving off here as the resistance gets really high so current can't increase at the same rate that it was before.